I'm the uh, Assistant Secretary General of the organization Public and Science VA, based here in Sweden. And during the next uh, 45 minutes here, we will focus on an aspect of open science that is not uh, usually as sort of explicit or top of mind as other aspects, such as uh, the sharing of data or open access to publications. So we'll talk about science communication and science engagement as uh, sort of enablers or drivers for uh, open science. Science communication here being understood as uh, communication and interaction with audiences outside uh, our sort of scientific peers. So it might be citizens or professional groups or policymakers, for example. And I see actually some really nice overlaps and uh, connections to the topics that were discussed in the previous session as well, that I'm sure that we will be able to come back to during this session. Uh, and we will hear from three different uh, policy initiatives uh, that are meant to stimulate uh, science communication in Europe or in different uh, national contexts uh, throughout this session. But we also would like to hear from you here in the audience, both you physically present here at the Museum of Natural History, but also from those of you who are joining us uh, all online from all over the world. So later during the session, we would like to hear from you and for you to share uh, inspiring initiatives that you know about that's happening in your local organizations or uh, a national context. So you can start thinking about that already now. Uh, and you are also uh, able to ask uh, questions to the speakers throughout the session through uh, the Menti tool that is shown here on, on the slide. And uh, we have quite a tight schedule here before lunch, so I would like to already now present uh, uh, Lydia Damian Borrell, who is uh, Secretary General of the organization Science Europe. And she will join us in a pre-recorded video presentation, and she will tell us about the position statement that has been developed by Science Europe that is specifically concerned with the topic of uh, science communication. So, welcome, Lydia. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to you at this important session on science and society, science communication and engagement enablers for open science. Apologies for not being able to be with you in person in the beautiful location of the Swedish Museum of Natural History. Today, we are here to discuss the importance of research culture and the value of open science, as well as the need for effective science communication and engagement. To begin, let us frame this discussion within the context of our research culture values framework. As you may know, we have defined six values, one of which is openness and transparency. This value emphasizes the need for all aspects of research to be shared and accessible for the examination, while respecting ethics and integrity. It also underlines the necessity that research process is appropriately explained and justified to relevant stakeholders at all levels. This value implies a profound discussion on the type of research culture that we want and acknowledges the responsibility of science and publicly funded research towards citizens. It is important to note that open science goes beyond open access to publications and it is a comprehensive ambition. I am here referring to the UNESCO recommendation on open science published last year. Science Europe and its members have defined two key objectives. I am referring here to our direction paper on open science published in June last year. First, we need to create an open and seamless collaboration between all actors involved in the research process. Second, we need to involve societal actors whenever relevant. This is where we forged a link between open science and science communication and engagement. Recently, some policy initiatives have drawn attention to global developments of open science. We cannot talk about open science without considering research assessment. A reform on research assessment is necessary to create an opening 
more space for science communication and engagement. Assessment practices focus on scholarly publishing while communication and engagement can and should take the form of many more outputs that are not journal publications. For example, interactive maps as the result of citizen science projects measuring air quality. It does more for public debate than journal publications. The Coalition for Advancing Research Assessment, COARA, that you may have heard of, will address these issues. Let me then turn more to science communication again. At Science Europe, we envision a science communication system that considers science communication as an integral part of the research culture that we want to build and is based on open science and ethical standards. It should allow fluent communication and interaction with various audiences, including citizens and policymakers, and provide timely and contrasted evidence relevant to societal challenges to better inform societal debates and policy making. Science Europe work with its member organizations to strengthen their capacity to equip researchers with tools to communicate research and more effectively, and with high standards of ethics and integrity. Our position statement on open science communication, published also in June 2022, aligns Science Europe member organizations in the initiation of actions, such as advocacy campaigns to build trust in science, partnerships with intergovernmental bodies to address misinformation and fake news, and institutional tools for researchers, such as toolkit and training activities. I would like to add a couple of more lessons learned. Discussions at the high-level workshop on the European Research Area in November 2022, hosted by the Swiss National Science Foundation, outlined some important aspects of science communication in the context of ethics and integrity. Communicating with a broader audience is crucial. Science communication should aim to explain scientific knowledge to the public in a transparent, honest and clear manner. It is important to communicate uncertainty here as well, which is an inherent to the scientific process. Public participation in research is also essential, and close interactions between researchers and the public can build trust and enhance the scientific process. For instance, the case of patient participation in research. In conclusion, we need to create a research culture that values more openness, transparency, ethical standards, open science, and effective science communication and engagement. Research organizations, therefore, should fully integrate science communication in their programs and activities and consider them as crucial elements of the quality and value of researcher for all. Advocating this vision will be the goal of a high-level conference on science communication that we are planning uh, on 12th and 13th March 2024 under the Belgian presidency of the EU Council. I look forward to see you all there and in the meantime and specifically for today, I wish you a great discussion. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Lydia. And now I would like to directly introduce uh, Anna Maria Fleetwood from the Swedish uh, Research Council that is part of Science Europe. And you have been uh, involved in development of this position paper and can tell us a bit more about that. Welcome. Thank you, Gustav. So, um, great. Let's have the first picture. There. Uh, great science doesn't speak for itself. Uh, it is critical that science, scientific evidence is readily available and easy to understand. Government, businesses and citizens are demanding more of such uh, evidence to make informed decision and to act. And fundamental changes in how information is uh, communicated through uh, the media have created uh, opportunities to information, but it has also opened uh, doors to mis- and disinformation. So I would like to thank uh, Lydia and Science Europe uh, uh, 
to because of the support uh, uh, in for the working group uh, uh, to take on the task to writing a position paper uh, on science communication i would also like to acknowledge that science communication is an important part of research culture and open science it was a pure delight to work with Science Europe. Uh, I think this paper is utmost important, both in EU uh, and globally. I would just briefly uh, go through the framework actions. Uh, Lydia was touched upon some of them uh, from the position paper uh, that we identified together uh, can contribute to foster science communication. So uh, the first one is strengthen the role uh, that research institutions have on science communication. Uh, this is to include, involve researchers in the development of communication outputs uh, and processes and shifting from focus on the individual scientist toward making it a part of a collective work. Create pan-European opportunities to develop awareness, enhance relevance and build trust in science, such as European-wide social media campaigns and events within EU institutions. Uh, we heard Lydia was talking about a conference that is planned, or high-level conference that is planned in the beginning of next year. Build um, partnership with science communication stakeholders uh, and intergovernmental bodies uh, that are already active uh, in science communi communication. That means to work with actors already in the sectors and not keep it in silos. Develop institutional tools for researchers to better communicate research. Uh, this includes uh, uh, creating toolkits and guidelines, organizing training, uh, activities, training and activities for researchers, acknowledging scientists uh, for the communication work, and incorporating communication plans into strategic plans of institution, research groups, and projects. Employ new and diverse forms of knowledge communication to improve the quality uh, of science communication, keeping abreast with latest tools and trends in communication, uh, in the communication sphere, such as improved knowledge of communication practices uh, should, that should be used to support scientists who must remain the crucial actors undertaking science communication. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna Maria. And we will hear more from you in a short while during our discussion after the presentations. But now I would like to present a guest that is joining us uh, online. And we heard a lot about uh, uh, the importance of trust during the previous session. That this is also one of the pillars within the position statement of Science Europe. And now we will meet uh, Ms. Barbara Schrotter, who is a policy advisor at the Austrian Federal Ministry of Education, Science and Research. And the ministry in Austria has developed a 10-point program to increase public trust in science and research in Austria. And Barbara will tell us more about this program. So welcome, Barbara. I'm pleased to be with you. Uh, and hello from rainy Vienna to Stockholm. Unfortunately, I um, just came back from Brussels and can only join you online. But thank you very much for the, for the very kind introduction. I, I would um, like to jump directly into the topic. So you all or we all remember the 2021 Special Europe Parameter Survey um, and in general there was a positive overall picture but in Austria as it was also in some other countries um, this is the results have caused 
lots of discussion and these discussions are still ongoing. On the one hand side, we see a high level of skepticism and on the other hand side, those of you in the community who followed the events also know, um, and let me, I hope you can see the presentation. I can't see it here on the screen. Do you see the, the slides? Yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, yes, and on the other hand side, there was lot, lots of uh, proud, pride and, and joy um, in our country when uh, quantum physics Anton Zeilinger was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics in December. So even the newspapers titled, uh, we are Nobel Prize, and uh, there was like uh, a wave of enthusiasm going over the whole country. But how does this fit together? Zeilinger himself gave a very interesting explanation why uh, in our country skepticism um, in science is, is, is very high. Uh, and he said that too little and people explain too little and um, too little well uh, about science. And he also sees uh, part of the responsibility in media, um, and uh, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, it was really a big issue that whenever there was a professional majority opinion about uh, the situation, about the crisis, um, there was always, they were always looking for this one expert who had a different opinion and, and gave this um, a, big, um, a, a big spot in, in the media. So this unsettled people as well. And um, there was, I think, the highest point and also all the, all the surveys show that during this period of time, um, it, the, there was the biggest insecurity. Um, and since taking office, our Minister for uh, Education, Science and Research, Martin Polaschek, uh, he was also, he's also a former professor for legal history. And he knew the survey already from his former job as a rector of the University of Graz. And he made it his task uh, to take action against the skepticism in Austria. So to this end, he initiated, initiated not only a strategy, but we also operationalized this with a, this 10-point program. Um, and it's a program not only about um, to strengthen trust in science, but also in democracy. Why democracy? Um, democracy, science and research, and the trust in science and research uh, is a cornerstone for our whole democratic society. So all the decisions or many of the decisions made by politicians are based on science. And this is why uh, it's also so important to impart an understanding of science and its achievements in our everyday lives and already starting from school. So um, for the focus of the strategy is along the entire education chain, starting uh, with children, pupils, teachers, scientists, the universities, and of course, all our partners, the research institutions. And since this uh, survey in 2021, many activities started in Austria. And there are groups of, of scientists and communicators um, doing so. So as a first step in the ministry, of course, uh, we went in to see what do the others who achieved better results in the 2021 survey. Um, and we would also like to especially thank our Swedish hosts for making this topic as a priority of the Swedish EU presidency. So, um, yeah. <laughs> um, let me start with, with our 10-point program. Um, we do not know the exact reasons why the trust in Austria is so low. So there are only estimations. But for this reason, the ministry uh, commissioned a study from the Institute for Advanced Studies together with the University of Aarhus in Denmark. 
Um, and this study examines the historic, socioeconomic, systematic, and also structural dimensions of the situation in Austria. And we already received the first interim report. And it's very interesting because probably it's not so much the skepticism, but it's more about the interest, the lack of interest um, that might be a cause for these results. But the results of the survey uh, will finally be available at the end of August. And of course, we will inform you also. And this will also be the basis for further recommendations for actions in Austria. Um, we see in other countries, like for example, um, Portugal, which is, that is like uh, the pioneer in this field for 25 years, um, that uh, in these best practice examples that all these countries have uh, a certain structure. And uh, the, this is why we also want to establish uh, this structure in Austria. But we see that it's also differently from country to country and existing uh, community structures have to be taken into account. So this pr process is currently ongoing. Um, we also do have a large number of offers in the field of science and democracy education in Austria, which includes many institutions that are now dealing with the topic. So this is why um, we want to make this um, easily accessible. And the University of Technology of Graz is working on a technical solution uh, in the framework of project in order to make these available. So uh, on a website with certain categories. Um, and as a first step, our Agency for International Affairs and Education has made a collection of about 500 offers to make them available on the web website uh, for schools. Um, yeah, the next topic is we want to focus on the expansion and strengthening of cooperation and uh, one of the four, um, it's so important to bring all the players together to bring science to schools, universities, research institutions, central institutions in the field of democracy, like, for example, parliament, memorial sites, courts, national parks. So um, one um, of our activities in this field, for example, is to focus on target groups that have less affinity with science. And for example, we reach out to 14 to 15 year old school um, pupils that will most probably not continue uh, to attend school. So it's, it's one of the last chances um, in the, within the school system uh, to bring them closer to science. And uh, we are preparing and organizing science weeks in June uh, for these special schools. Yeah, and to reach out to the schools um, is, is a high priority for us. So therefore we also established a network of contacts in all the nine federal states um, to reach out with information to the schools. Uh, another project ongoing um, we established science and democracy ambassadors. Uh, what is this? So there, is, there are scientists, they go to schools and talk about their work, their career, how they came, what is their motivation, um, and also to, to bring their enthusiasm to the kids. And the number of these ambassadors, we have about 300 now, and it's uh, constantly increasing. I will now um, go to the next point. Uh, it's about the teacher's training. Teacher's training is also very important to us because um, we also need to embed this into, um, into the, the teachers. Also uh, into the curricula, our focus is not only on the scientists, but we also want to start with the students and to anchor the topic in the of science communications in their um, in their uh, curricula, so every student and every researcher has to be uh, has to explain what science is 
and what it brings to everyday life in a very simple way. Um, and how do we bring, how do we get people um, to be science ambassadors, for example, or to do more science communications? So we need to create incentives for our researchers. Uh, they need to have opportunities and the freedom to do so, to get more involved in schools, to do more science communication. And uh, to, to do this and to, to do this performance, we need on the one hand side incentives, but on the other hand side also support the employers, like the universities, uh, the research institutions. And there are already discussions ongoing on European level about um, evaluating differently the performance in science and research and also at the national level uh, we want to include this into the agreements with the university for example yeah and the last point of course uh, i started at the beginning with the role of the media so they are also a very important partner to us uh, when it comes to to communication Sorry, <laughs> I could talk for hours about this uh, to us very important topic and thank you for giving me the opportunity and I'm looking very much forward also to the other comments. Thank you very much, Barbara. I think this is a really unique uh, initiative coming from the uh, minister's side, but with the respect of time we will go straight to our next guest here today, coming from uh, the Netherlands where they have launched a very new national center for uh, science communication. And Alex, uh, Alex uh, Ferkad, who is uh, head of communication and positioning at the Regiorgan SIA, is here to tell us more about this. So welcome, Alex. So we're just waiting for the sound. Um. Thank you very much uh, for, for having me. I, I think it's very nice that at a conference that is about open science, you also pay some attention to science communication, because as you said, those are two separate fields uh, of people in the world, while at the same time, the subjects are very close together and overlap uh, a lot. I still see the slide of Barbara. I don't know what you are seeing. Maybe I should, oh, this is my first. Um, so the National Center of Expertise on Science and Society um, in the Netherlands is in fact so new that it hasn't started yet. We have, uh, Jonica Smeets and I have spent the past half year um, on an assignment from the Ministry of Science to come up with a, with a plan. That plan is launched. You see a QR code on the screen um, that will lead you to the uh, English summary. We have, unfortunately, we don't have the whole plan in English yet, maybe. Feel free to translate it, um, but we do have a summary and, um, and a theory of change in English. So feel free to download it and share it as widely as possible. Um, oh, I'm now pressing the keys on my keyboard, but I should use this app on my phone to go to the next slide. It is, it is connecting. Um, we are struggling. Yes, there it is. So I only have uh, five minutes now. I will. Uh, I, I have chosen to give you a very short sketch of what this center is going to be and what it's going to do. Of course, there's a lot more to tell, but I hope you will ask uh, the questions that you will, would like to have answered uh, later on. So this is the um, mission of the center that is going to start somewhere later this year. Um, it will be uh, a national center that will not have uh, a direct link with the with the publics, but instead will help researchers and all other people doing science communication to do that better. Um, and the end goal would be a better society uh, through better connections through uh, between science and society. Um, I would like to show the, the next slide, but my app is not really working. So if someone can, yes, thank you very much. So. We have, uh, in the past half year, we have talked to over 400 people in the Netherlands and also abroad, some of the national centers um, that Barbara also mentioned. Uh, for example, in Portugal, we also spoke to, and in England and in Germany, um, but mostly a lot of people in the Netherlands from the science um, uh, community. Um, and we came up with an advice and uh, for a national center 
about science communication. So what is it going to be? Our Minister of um, Culture, Education and Science has um, budgeted uh, 10 million euros in total for the next 10 years, so 1 million euro a year. Um, we have um, uh, advised, and the advice has been, uh, has been uh, uh, accepted, to um, establish a center that will have five people working in it. It launches later this year. Um, it will be uh, an independent foundation, so it will not be run by the ministry, it will not be run by a university, and it will not be run by a, uh, any other existing organization in the field of in the Netherlands uh, to ensure its, um, its independence. So it will be an independent foundation that will have a small uh, board in which a number of people will be uh, representing uh, different aspects of, of the science uh, ecosystem and will have a large steering group to involve uh, citizens, all kinds of uh, organizations doing science communication and also more representatives of the science uh, ecosystem. So just to sketch what this center will look like and what it will spend its money on, uh, uh, mostly on, on people and a little bit about, uh, on activities. I'm pressing my phone, so I hope someone sees that and will, yes. So this is very small and um, very small letters and a very big uh, sheet of text. I, I only want to show you this uh, because uh, we are proud of it and um, it is also in the English uh, translation. Good QR code. But this um, is a form of theory of change that we developed uh, with all, uh, all these people that we talked to, to, uh, to make clear how very small activities from our national center can lead through a number of, um, of consequences to what you see at the top of this, of this schedule, uh, a future-proof society with equality and with um, uh, science uh, able to take its responsibility um, to contribute to a better world. Um, I don't expect anyone to read all of this right now. It's just to show you that there is um, uh, that this is there and, and I would love to invite you to uh, read this and, and use it any way you would like to um, translate it and, uh, and we based our advice on, uh, on this. So practically the, the first question that a lot of people ask when I talk about the center is what is it going to do um, and I always start uh, my answer by telling people what it's not going to do. Uh, our national center is not going to do science communication activities itself. It's not going to translate science to the public, it's not going to organize festivals, it's not going to do journalism, it's, it's not going to educate um, society. Um, why not? Because there's already a lot of great stuff going on and there, there is so much science communication going on in the Netherlands that it would not help to add more. Uh, what we are going to do is help people make that science communication that is already happening uh, better and better means uh, have more make it have more impact for the time and money that is spent on it uh, make it more of a dialogue instead of just sending information um, make it more accessible for uh, everyone in society not just people who happen to be close to science either physically or through their education or through their networks um, and a number of different ways what the center is also not going to do is supply funding to science communication projects. Um, the easy argument is that the budget is too low for that. We have 1 million euros a year. We could not really fund um, uh, a number of big projects meaningfully. Another reason is that there is already funding for science communication, a little bit. Um, what we are going to do is um, co-create policies and also co-create these, these funding opportunities for science communication um, through other parties that already fund stuff. Um, and what the center is also not going to do is um, train scientists or train practitioners to do better science communication. Also for the reason that these trainings already exist. Um, the problem is not that they don't exist, the problem is that people don't find them because they are small, they're sometimes only for people in, the, in, in, in one faculty or one university. What this center is going to do is, uh, is find those trainings, know the people who get who, deliver them and make sure they will be more accessible to more practitioners of science communication. Um, that, that will be okay for now, I think. 
the center is going to do a lot more. That's that's all in the report. Unfortunately for you, it's all in Dutch. Um, anyone who would again who would be willing to translate this uh, this stuff would be more uh, than welcome to do so. Um, so as promised, I uh, I kept it very short. This was my uh, this this was a very short introduction of what we are going to do later this year, and I hope you um, will ask me any and all questions that you would like to have answered today or later on. My contact uh, information will probably be somewhere in the proceedings. Great, thank you very much, Alex. And we're really following the development of this uh, national center with huge interest here from Sweden and I know from a lot of other parts of Europe and the world as well. Um, so we have now just about 10 minutes uh, to go of this uh, session and I would like to invite Anna Maria to come up back here on stage. And as I said in the beginning of the session, we'd love to hear about, because these now are three really impressive, I think, policy initiatives uh, from different parts uh, meant to stimulate science communication. But we would love to hear about uh, more initiatives that you know of that are sort of off the top of our radar. So you can go into Menti again now and feel free to add uh, your uh, thoughts on this topic. And uh, I hope that we will also be able to see whatever you uh, uh, put in there uh, up here on the screen, also visible for Barbara and uh, Alex. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, I thought that I would uh, find some questions that have been sent in through Menti for the speakers. See if I can find the question that sort of tags into all of your presentations here. Uh, so, for example, I mean, the overall theme of this conference is uh, open science, whereas during this session we specifically talk about the aspect of science communication and involving uh, other professional groups than scientists uh, within science. And where do you sort of see the relationship between these two concepts, science communication and open science? Lydia was uh, sort of uh, elaborating a bit on this in her presentation. But uh, what would you say, Alex? Oh, I, I would say that um, open science for me is about um, access and, and exchange, in a way. Um, uh, and as Lydia said, I, I very much agree with that. That doesn't uh, begin and end with, um, uh, you know, open access to scientific publications. Um, access is much more than not having to uh, pay for uh, for articles. Access is also understanding what is in them, um, being able to talk to scientists about the results and stuff like that. So I, <clears throat> I would say that science communication could very much be an, an aspect or a contribute to the, the higher goals of, of open science. Great, thank you. Uh, Barbara, do you have any thoughts on, on the topic, on the relationship between open science and science communication? Yeah, for me, they are also interlinked because, uh, yeah, science has to be open, but it also has to be uh, communicated in a way that everybody can understand and it, that uh, it causes also interest and enthusiasm about it. So I, I see this, these two topics uh, very important together. Thanks a lot, important together. And Anna Maria, would you like to add something? No, um, I think that this was one of the, the, the aims and the goals with uh, organizing this conference to really broaden the knowledge about uh, open science and uh, get away from the focus a little bit uh, uh, that it's not just publications and, and data and uh, hopefully we had uh, sort of added s some more uh, aspects of open science uh, and I also think that this is really clearly stated in the recommendations from the UNESCO where it's really included the public engagement as part of open science. Great, thanks. And another theme of the conference is going from policy to practice. And all of these three initiatives that we heard about are really nice, I think, uh, policy initiatives 
even though I mean the uh, the Dutch National Center is uh, now coming into practice uh, in a way uh, being materialized but uh, for example, with a position paper in Science Europe and uh, uh, the 10 point program for increased trust in Austria, how do you see what are the sort of important factors for putting these policies into actual practice? What is needed? What do you say, Anna Maria? I think um, it was important and it's important that. Uh, Everyone in the working group has taken this position paper back to the organizations uh, and it has been discussed within the, the, the organization at the highest level. And I mean, this is not something that we change overnight, but I think that every time we speak about science communication uh, in in sort of sense of policy, I think we sort of contrib contribute to uh, a better and a broader understanding that this is part of the scientific process, as also Lydia, Lydia uh, pointed out. Great, thanks. And uh, uh, Barbara, how do you envision from the Austrian perspective um, the rolling out in practice, so to say, this 10-point uh, program? Absolutely, uh, you, and you see we have a very operational focused program, um, but of course in, within the process or during this process we see uh, the 10 points, this, our process is not finished with them, so we are already talking about uh, further steps going beyond this and, and of course um, I, can, or, I can, can sign everything that was said also by Lydia and Anna Maria and I'm also very interested in, in how it will go on in the Netherlands with Alex and their project. Thanks a lot. I would also like to repeat the, the Menti code for submitting uh, uh, your views on uh, initiatives that you know about. The code is 59147979, as you can see here on the screen. And uh, I don't know if we have any submissions as of yet that we could view on the screen. Uh, if not, uh, I thought that, uh, I mean, going from policy to... Yeah, here we have some uh, initiatives actually coming up here. Can you see this as well, Barbara and um, uh, Alex? Yeah. I see this, yes. Transdisciplinary yes. thematic collaboration initiatives going on at Lund University here in the southern Sweden. <coughs> we also have a wanted point here, connecting citizen science with schools and creating not only communication materials for education, but for wider public. Why not making TV shows? It's a good idea. That's right. <laughs> we are also in, in close touch, for example, with, with the media, with, with public television, um, and they, are, they also have a great interest in bringing more science into yeah. their programs. Great. You're uh, really welcome to continue to submit this, and we will also be able to share this with you after the, the conference and after the session. One last question before we end here, because we talked about going from policy into practice, and I guess the next step would be going from practice to some sort of impact. And then I'm interested in what sort of impacts are you uh, envisioning uh, when it comes to your initiatives. I mean, one impact could be, of course, increasing public trust in science. Another impact could be uh, increased scientific literacy. And uh, yeah, I guess there are many different types of impacts that you would like to see. And if you would just like to very, very short uh, elaborate a bit on what, what types of impacts do you personally see for your uh, different uh, initiatives. So we can start with Alex. Yeah. Um, well, we've 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 put that down in the report as well in in a very elaborate way. But I will I will keep it very short. We would like to um, what we think science communication can do is help people um, uh, make better decisions for themselves in their lives because the world is very scientific uh, uh, and it's very important to know what goes on. Um, uh, but also to um, uh, to make sure that um, scientists and non scientists can work together to. Uh, to solve these big 
uh, complex uh, issues that are facing us um, uh, with climate change and people in societies getting older and older, especially in, in, in Dutch societies, um, and other um, and other major complex problems that, that cannot be solved by science alone, that cannot be solved by citizens alone, but we have to work together and combine all this, all the forms of knowledge that we have. Super. Thanks, Alex. Uh, it's actually uh, closing to uh, lunch here at 12 o'clock, and we will soon be able to have something to eat outside here. But uh, before that, I will need to introduce uh, uh, Lisa Monson, who is the director here of the Natural History Museum. And uh, uh, you will tell us a bit of what happens during lunch, but also after lunch here. That's true. Uh, so we will continue in this room until three o'clock this afternoon. So I hope that many of you are planning to stay. Um, the finale will be that we have the Minister for Culture um, talking to us on the subject. Uh, that will be very interesting. But before that, we'll have different perspectives on how um, uh, different um, European networks are working together to foster science and make that available. And we also have some examples from both Science Centers and Natural History Museum, both this that you're visiting today and the one in Copenhagen. So that is coming up after lunch. And for lunch, I just want to let you know that the tables are set right outside this room. So you can just go up to the counter and say that you're part of this uh, conference and they will uh, serve you a hot meal of vegetarian food. Thanks a lot, Lisa, and thank you very much to Anna Maria and Barbara and Alex for, I think, extremely interesting presentations of initiatives and an intense uh, discussion. Uh, so, thank you very much for all of your contributions here today.